Hey there Internet, I'm Michael and today on To Can Play That Game I'm doing my review of Scythe which as you can see I have two copies here and that's because during September 2016 we're running Two Can Win That Game where we're giving away two copies one which obviously I've opened and have been using to film these videos and the other one which is completely unopened now you can enter for absolutely nothing it's completely free to enter and you can just follow the link in the description of this video to do so. The competition will be running until the 22nd of September, so if it's before then, do be sure to enter for your chance to win this game completely free anywhere in the world. So with that out of the way, what is Scythe? What is it that you can win? Well, let's look at the covers here, because we have two covers, we might as well look at them both. They are, of course, identical, and they show us a farm, with mechs in the background. And that is this game, it's farming with mechs. That is the simplest, most concise way to really explain it, and the cover does that beautifully. It is the nature of this game that it is that. Now, what this all actually comes down to is, thematically, this is an alternate reality, 1920s, sort of Eastern Europe kind of thing. And the nature of it is that, well, there was this factory that suddenly popped up that made mechs. It is the source of all this mech technology. No one knows who built it, where it came from. But the war's now over and the factory lays dormant. You are all commanding an army in one country or another and you're looking to build yourselves up post-war. One of the ways you're going to do that is racing to that factory in order to gain more technology and more resources. But other than that, you're going to be building up your army. You're going to be building new mechs. You're going to be enlisting recruits into your army, as well as getting workers in order to build your mechs, to build buildings. And your workers will also be producing resources for you and that's what a large part of this game comes down to that resource management using those resources to do all the other things now if you do want to know more detail about how the game actually plays then i have also done how to play videos and a playthrough video so do take a look at those and that should tell you everything you need to know let's talk about what you see first the artwork and as i've said the cover art does a great job of letting you know what this game is. It's also fantastically beautiful and thematically world building and the cards are filled with it. Throughout this entire game you will see that artwork. It is absolutely beautiful and I, I, I don't know anyone who has not thought so really. Then let's talk about the components. So look at this. This box is packed full of components, so I'm really not going to go through them individually one by one because, frankly, we'll be here all day. I did do an unboxing video, so if you do want to see what all the different components are, you could always watch that. But what I will say is the components are high quality. It, there's no other way of talking about it. The wooden components are all beautiful. The miniatures are beautiful sculpted miniatures. There is really no fault to be found with these components. The player mats, the way the cubes sit into them rather than just sliding around, is fantastic. So, yeah, I have no complaints. All the cards are all good quality. Any of the tokens are good quality. Absolutely no complaints component-wise. So, gameplay. What do I think of the gameplay? Well, this is one of those games where the more I play it, the better it becomes. It is very much a game that your first few plays, you're just kind of getting your feet with it, getting a feel for the game. And then after about your third game, you really know what you're doing. You're getting a better idea of what to do with this faction, what to do with that faction, looking at your player board and going, all right, so this is how this should work. This is what I should be going for. And I do really like that. It is an in-depth, good thinky game but that's also in many ways one of the problems with this game because of that lack of randomness in the gameplay because of the lack of randomness in the setup and the map yes you have a different faction board and a different player board that adds a nice amount of variety to get you through probably if you're playing in close succession at least like I have been 20 odd games 
But once you've played a faction with a player board, the other players in the game don't tend to make a huge difference to the gameplay. It does make some difference, it will kind of steer some of your decisions. Um, but yeah, it makes me worried about the replay value because once you've played a faction with a specific player board, it's always going to play that same way pretty much. Yes, there'll be slight differences. But yeah, so that's one concern there, replay value. And I, I'm not saying it's got no replay value, don't get me wrong. You'll easily get 20 games of this in close succession without feeling any sense of re repetition there. But if you're looking to play this every week for the rest of your life, you're going to have trouble. Now, most gamers aren't going to have this problem because, frankly, they have a games library, they have a collection. They're not going to be playing this time after time and they can just have a break. And if you have a little break, you'll forget what happened last time a bit and it'll just all feel fresh again. And of course, there's expansions coming with new factions that will add a new ton of variety into this game. So that's not really a huge downside. It's just something for someone who might want to just have it as their only game. But then it's also quite a complex game. Now, don't get me wrong, it's very actually simple to learn and play compared to what you would expect looking at it. There are lots of rules, but those rules are simple. And once you understand the basic premise of the game and how the action selection works, it is a very easy game to actually play, but it isn't at a level of a gateway game. Partly because of the time, partly because of the fact that there is so little luck in it. Now, the only luck during the game is going to be those encounters and also combat card draws. And frankly, you don't tend to do too many of those unless you're specific factions. But even then, it doesn't make that big a difference. I mean, I've played games where combat doesn't occur, so the draws of the combat cards really don't matter. But that is both a good and a bad thing. If you want a game that is mech battling, this is not going to be that game. This is a Euro game. It is farming with mechs tacked on. But those mechs do a lovely job, not of meaning that you have this battling going on, but of creating a transport mechanic that works really nicely, where you want your mechs to be able to move around the board and to move your workers around the board even but also to create a tension, the threat of battle. It's kind of this Cold War-esque feel. You know, you see someone doing the uh, bolster action, you see them getting their power up, and you're like, oh, what are they going to do? Are they going to come after me? Maybe I should put my power up. I need to put my power up. It's against what I was going to do, but I need to do it. And that's what's lovely about this game, because if you kind of just get into the feel of it, that it is this almost... Europe Cold War feel. Everyone is scared and feared and they're worried about f fights occurring. It's nice how you can use your workers as defence in a way because no one really wants to lose popularity because you lose popularity you're gonna get less points. So you throw workers with your mechs and then people are like oh, I don't really want to get in a fight with you I'll lose popularity. <laughs> is really nice and interesting. It has to be said, this is a fantastically well-designed game. The balance is superb. And that's why there's no randomness in the setup, because if you had that, it would ruin the balance. That whole balance comes from each faction's power and what they, resources they have available, how those all key together, work together, how you reach places. That creates this fantastic balance, and it is such a well-balanced, well-designed game. But it isn't the game for me. Now, it is a midweight Euro. I do like some Euros, but I don't have time for a lot of them, and I have other games that I prefer, frankly. This is a very good game, and people will enjoy it. Now, my wife is not so keen on it. The playtime even after quite a few games, you're talking an average of around two hours, which is the box time, so that's pretty good. It's unusual for box times to be that accurate. But your first few plays are going to probably go well over that. And if you ever play with a new person, you've then got to explain it. And that's part of what puts me off of this. It's a same I have with probably one of my favourite top ten games, which is one of the games that 
is the reason I'm not buying this, but if you like that game, you'll probably like this too. And that's Terra Mystica. The game length and the complexity for teaching new people kind of puts me off, and I've taught this a lot recently because I've been playing it so much to playtest. And so I'm quite good at teaching it and explaining it. And still, though, you explain it and then you're sat there kind of going, have you decided what you're going to do with your turn yet? Whereas once people have gotten into the flow, it's like turn, 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 turn. Towards the end of their first game, even, it will start to have that flow to it. Now, when you start the game, it can feel a bit open and that can put people off. Um, but I think that's the thing. It's that type of game where some people will love that openness. Some people will dislike it. Some people will love being able to look at the player board and going, OK, there is all these options I could do, but based on what my player board is, this is going to be the most efficient thing for me to do. And that's kind of key to winning in that is in this game is to identify that and react to what other people are doing as well with regards to combat, etc. Now, what else is there to say? Can it play two players? Can two play that game? Yes, it works absolutely fantastically as a two player game. There can be a little low on the interaction but not really that much more so than when you have more players. And it gets to around the mid game where people have got off their own little islands and then because of the tunnels, you're all easily in reach of each other. You're not avoiding each other. And that means that it works no matter how many players you're work playing with, with that same size map. Now it can be more tight and more aggressive if you play two factions near each other than apart, but it doesn't really make that much difference because, as I say, once you get to that mid-game, once you get to that point where you're actually off your island and maybe considering having battles and fighting and contesting over territories, then you're pretty much able to get most places anywhere. And it just kind of depends on your faction exactly where you are able to get. The final thing I do want to talk about with this is that it does play one player. It has the autonomous mode. Now, the autonomous mode does have a bit of a learning curve to it. It can be quite complicated to figure out and learn how the units move, etc. But after maybe one or two games playing with the autonomous mode, you're pretty much able to eyeball immediately, right, that'll go there, that'll go there, that'll go there, and it really speeds up the game. Now, the way it works with the cards and the draws means that you get this randomised experience that you don't quite know what the Autonomous is going to do, which creates a lovely game experience. But without it being a case of some AIs where it just doesn't make sense what they're doing. It's just how good what they're going to do is going to be in this. It's not a case of, oh, well, that makes no sense. That, that hasn't helped further their cause at all. Why would they wouldn't have done that? So that's bad AI. No, the AI works really well in this form, seeming logical, but unpredictable, which is fantastic. That's what you want from a solo play game. This is definitely one of the best solo play games out there on the market, in my opinion. But it is a long solo play game with, you know, a large table area, something to just keep in mind. Another good thing about this game is the action selection system. Yes, having a mat with actions on that you select is not unique. Having things be revealed when you do buildings, etc. is not unique. The combination of all these things, however, is unique. And the fact that you've got the different player boards with the top and bottom powers that's different, having that kind of asymmetric play between the player boards. And it works really nicely to create a good amount of variety in this game, although it could use some more, as I've said. But still, that is nice, and the way they're made, the way they work, and the way it kind of creates a different feel is nice for these different player boards. So, in summary, yes, this is a fantastic, well-designed game, but it's not one I'm keeping in my collection because I've got other games I would choose to play instead of this. Now, I definitely think this is a game people should try if they like that midweight Euro, but if what you're looking for is a mech battling, dice rolling game, this isn't it. There isn't enough luck in there with this. The combat is deterministic. You know how much power the other people might put in, but it's got that nice little reveal element that gives an excitement to the combat still. And the fact that you've got the cards, that you had just that little bit of luck, that you don't know, well, they've drawn cards, but they might all be twos, and you've got a five, is nice. 
but it's not enough to make this game appeal to anyone who doesn't like that sort of midweight Euro game. Basically, if you like the games done by Stonemaier Games, you will like Scythe by Stonemaier Games. And I think that will be true for most people. So that is my summary. If you like Stonemaier Games, then this is one to get. Otherwise, definitely I would say try it. It has a lot going for it. It will take a few kind of goes of the game, though, to really appreciate it. But if you absolutely hate it the first time, it isn't going to change your decision on that. I liked it, but I like it more now. I, When I first played this and did my first impressions, I said this was probably a top 50 game, but not one I'm planning to put in my collection because of other things and because of the playtime. What I would say is this is probably actually design-wise a top 20 game, but I still wouldn't play it enough to warrant having it in my own collection. Okay, I do hope that you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, and of course if you have, please do subscribe to the channel and share it with the rest of your friends and family, and also check out the rest of the videos on the channel, and do also take a look at us on social media. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter, and as always, thanks for watching, and bye for now.